Hello, and welcome to Archvelder's Hacks with Archvelder and his amazing hacks. In my recent leveling guide, I featured several powerful items to help me level that, unfortunately, in a tightly edited 35-minute video, I did not mention. In this video, I'll go into some detail about those items and other items which have very valuable properties for leveling purposes. First, there were two items released with BFA which formed part of the engineering profession. Now, normally explosives are exclusive to engineers and often underwhelming, and for that reason I hadn't realised the power of the new items, which are named FRIED, that's written like an acronym, and Thermo Accelerated Plague Spreader. These items are consumables, which means anyone, not just engineers, can use them. Uh, they both do a lot of AoE damage and unusually do not share a cooldown, and can be used by anyone at any level. Now, you can often find these explosives on the auction house for significantly less than they cost to make, because engineers often make them and just dump them on the auction house because they just want to level up. However, it isn't actually that difficult to make them yourself. If you have a character without a profession, or you can just use a class trial, professions are now grouped up by expansion. So all you need to do is get BFA Engineering from the trainer I just showed you in Borellis and learn the recipe there. You'll need some insulated wiring and monolite in addition to the blast caps you get from the trainer. There are three ranks for each explosive which dramatically reduce the material cost. These items are useful for any situation where you need to do AOE damage but they are especially useful for the grinding strategies I showed in my main levelling video. Several people pointed out that not all classes have the type of AoE damage needed for mob grinding, but with these explosives your character doesn't need to use their abilities at all. You can kill all these mobs here in Blackrock Hold in just over 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which gets you about 15% of the level, just using the explosives. Obviously, you will be much faster when you do use your character's abilities, but that gives you an indication of how powerful these explosives are. Now, the following strategy is also relevant to two-person grinding. It relates to various Azerite armor traits, where, when the trait procs, it gifts a nearby player of the same faction some advantage. Azerite armor traits designed to aid other players are not scaling down properly. For example, the Azerite trait, Stronger Together, gives every player of the same faction in the same vicinity an unscaled boost that can allow low-level players to do some serious damage temporarily. My mage here is attacking a target dummy. Now look at the buff that's being gifted to my low-level hunter. Now look at this buff from the same trait later in the recording. The next item I'm going to talk about is an epic two-handed sword named Sultres the Lasher. Now this sword, usable from level 44 onwards, can be assembled from two other weapons which drop in the instance Zulfarak, the entrance to which is in northern Tanaris. You will need someone to run your low-level character through the instance with a max level tune or a second account. It can be done with a method I explained in my last video, solo, but it is tricky and will require you to thoroughly remove all the patrolling mobs with your high-level character. The two weapons you need to form Salthrays are Jangthrays the Protector and Sangthrays the Deflector. Sangphrase drops from the boss Antuzul, and that has a drop chance of 22.4%. Uh, the boss is located in the northeast of the instance. Note that you will need your low level character in the immediate vicinity of the kill in order to loot the item. 
Now, Jan Craig's the Protector drops from the final boss, Chief Urkos Sandskulp, 16.49% of the time. You'll need to free the Goblin Weekly Blast for use and go through all the fighting and roleplay on the Pyramid to get to Sandskulp. Now, I completed the whole process in half an hour using a secondary account. Should be faster if you have a friend helping you. Now, once you've assembled Soul Thrice, it becomes apparent why this weapon has been tearing up the 40 to 49 twink PvP bracket. This weapon procs a huge amount of damage. You can see the skull and crossbones uh, across the target there. The damage doesn't seem to have been scaled down properly during the stat squish at the start of the expansion. When self throws procs, it also lowers the damage of the enemy you're fighting significantly. And that makes self throws the weapon of choice for fighting exceptionally difficult mobs. Now, the next items I'm going to talk about form a weird two set known as Spider's Kiss, composed of the Dagger, Fang of the Crystal Spider, and the Mace Venom Spitter. And these are both obtainable at level 55. Now to obtain these items, you'll need to go to Lower Blackrock Spa. And as before, you'll need a high level character to run a leveling character through the dungeon. Now once we've entered the instance, the first item is relatively easy to obtain. Follow this path here down into the dungeon. I'm going to speed up the footage here and kill Mother Smolderweb. Now when you kill Mother Smolderweb, 19% of the time she'll drop the Mace Venom Spitter. Now the second item we are looking for is right next to Mother Swalder Web and drops from the mob Crystal Fang. And right in front of me is where Crystal Fang should be, but she's not there as she's a rare elite and she only spawns some of the time in this dungeon. So what we're going to do is go back to the entrance, throw yourself in the lava if necessary, reset the instance then go back into the instance and then use the command forward slash tar crystal fang and that's to check whether the rare is actually in the instance or not has actually spawned in the instance or not and as you can see here crystal fang has spawned it's only a 14 percent chance that it will drop the dagger so you may have to run it a few times and you can see on this run we get lucky and there's the item we want. Now the reason we want these items is because of this amazing immobilization effect which lasts a full 10 seconds and does not have any diminishing returns associated with it. At higher levels you can switch the two set out for weapons with better stats when the proc is triggered. So there's the video. Hope you found these items useful. If you did, why not consider subscribing? And if you really liked it, why not join my super secret Patreon feed where tricks like this and a lot of stuff that's too hot for YouTube gets posted the second I come up with it. Thanks for watching. This has been Archrather.